In this video, I'm going to teach you the trick boingy boing, and it looks like this. Uh, now, boingy boing is one of those tricks where the day you first decide to start learning this trick is probably not going to be the day you feel like you've mastered it. Maybe not even the day you feel like you've hit it even once. And that's because boingy boing, it just takes a really long time and a lot of practice to get down right. Uh, the nice thing about it is once you have it down, it's pretty easy to execute but just getting the motion exactly right, it takes a long time. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do the trick, but mostly what I'm doing is I'm giving you all the tips that you need so that when you practice it, you're gonna have the most chance of developing the right technique without running into problems. So the first thing that you need to do when you wanna practice boingy boing is you wanna get into the split bottom mount. And one of the problems that a lot of people run into as they practice the trick is that they continually miss the strings. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do with the strings to make sure that they're lined up as much as they can be. The first thing is that typically when you get into a split bottom mount, you have your yo-yo uh, -yo finger bent in. And what you wanna do for boingy boing is you wanna extend it and then lay the string from your yo-yo -yo finger right over the string going over the first finger of your yo-yo hand. And that'll make sure that all the strings can be perfectly aligned so that the yo-yo can go between them. Now, the second thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that both of your hands are perfectly aligned with one another. And what I mean by that is a couple of things. Uh, the first thing, you wanna make sure that your first finger and both hands are parallel to each other. You don't want them to be uh, angled off like this. You can see that that causes the yo-yo to twist and turn. And it also gets the strings uh, out of the way of the yo-yo, so you're almost guaranteed to miss them if your fingers aren't perfectly parallel. The second thing is you want to make sure that the strings for the trick are going up and down perfectly straight. And so a lot of times when you're first practicing and there's kind of that awkwardness of not knowing what to do with your hands, there's going to be a tendency for your opposite hand to move to the outside a little bit or for one of your hands to not be right over the other. You can see again that causes the yo-yo to turn, it misaligns the strings. So if you're having a lot of problems with the yo-yo leaning or turning in the middle of this trick, Make sure that the string is perfectly vertical by having your hands lined up. Make sure your fingers are parallel to one another. And make sure that the string coming off of your yo-yo finger is laying on top of the string going over the first finger of your yo-yo hand. Now, once you have everything lined up, uh, one other tip that I can give you to make it a little bit easier is it's a good idea to set your bottom hand slightly in front of your yo-yo hand, and you can see that that causes a little bit of separation between the yo-yo and the front string. A lot of times people, when they teach the trick, uh, they tell you to have your hands perfectly vertical. We found that it's, it's kind of hard to get the boing started when the yo-yo is set up that way. And so if you just have your bottom hand slightly in front of your yo-yo hand, and again, just a little bit, then there's a little bit of room for the yo-yo to actually get started with the trick. Now, once you get better at the trick, what you can do is you can use the momentum of getting into the mount to give yourself a lot more room. You can see it swings back and then you can launch right into the mount, but that's when you get better at the trick. That's one way to approach it. Now, as you're practicing this trick, uh, it should be pretty straightforward in the sense that you know that you need to pull your hands apart in order for the yo-yo to go into this front string. But what may not be obvious is that you also need to bring your hands together as it hits the front string. And see what happens if you're not thinking about that. You'll pull your hands apart and it'll just ricochet into that top string and then kind of bounce between them. And this is one of those things that makes boingy boing really difficult is that it's not just an upward motion, there's also a downward motion involved as well. So let me show you what that looks like if, you, uh, if you're doing the trick and you're doing really large boings like this, you can see how close my hands get together. And the reason for that is, is that the further the yo-yo extends into the front of the mount and also toward the back of the mount, you need to bring your hands together to give it all that room. And so again, that's uh, just part of working on this trick is you're gonna keep your bottom hand still and your top hand is gonna move straight up and straight down. And uh, it's gonna take a little while to figure out that balance. Another thing that a lot of new players do when they're first working on this trick is instead of pulling straight up and straight down, they imagine that since the yo-yo has to go front to back, they do kind of a front and back motion, which that's so much harder to control. It doesn't look as good. 
it's a better thing to just work on being very focused on just moving your hands straight up and straight down. Now, as you're practicing this and you're getting the up and down motion going, one thing that might happen is you might see the yo-yo start to slide down the string toward your opposite hand, and this might even happen, or the opposite might happen, where as you're doing the boings, um, it might start to climb up the string and even hit your top hand. The reason why that's happening has to do with your bottom hand. As you're practicing the trick, like I already said, you want to keep your bottom hand perfectly still. If you start to bring your bottom hand up even a little bit, what will happen is the yo-yo will immediately fall down into the bottom of the mount. And the same thing is true if you're putting too much tension on the string by pulling your hands apart, the yo-yo will start to slide up and it'll eventually hit your top hand. And so the easiest thing to do is to just keep that finger still, not move it, and try to control the trick with your other hand completely. Now some people might tell you that if you're consistently having this problem where the yo-yo is dropping during the trick, that you should pinch the string up here, and that will keep it from dropping, but it also adds kind of an element of slack to the trick. And that just complicates things. Um, it's something that if you can just keep your bottom hand still, that it will stop happening. Don't pinch the string. It just makes it more difficult than it really needs to be. So now that you're kind of keeping track of all of this stuff, you've got it into the mount, you've got the strings lined up, you've got the strings on top of each other on your first finger, uh, now you're going to start practicing the trick. And chances are, like I said, you're not going to have a lot of success right away um, but that's just part of the discipline of learning this trick, is you need to give yourself some time to work it out. There's going to be a lot of failures, um, but eventually you'll get that feeling. Um, but I want to give you a couple more things that you can do while you're practicing, um, just to try something else, so that you can keep working on it, even when you feel like you're not having success. So the first thing that you can do is you can actually practice this trick outside of the split bottom mount. So watch this. Uh, you're in the split bottom mount, and if you just pull your opposite hand out, now you're in uh, like a keychain mount kind of. And watch this. If you just move your hands straight up and down, you can get that same back and forth motion with just one hand. And again, this illustrates that it's not just about pulling your hands apart, but it's also bringing your hands together. That up and down motion works. And watch this. You can actually transition right from this. If you insert your hand at just the right point, you can transition right into a boing and then back out again. And so it is the right motion, but what this illustrates is that boingy boing is a lot more about rhythm and timing than it is just slamming the yo-yo into the strings or it bouncing between two strings. And uh, what I mean by that is as you're practicing the trick, what you want is to have a consistent, steady rhythm. That's super, super important. What doesn't matter is how fast that rhythm is or how slow it is. What matters is that it's consistent. And as long as you can have that consistency, then the yo-yo will kind of match the rhythm that you have. And this particular way of practicing illustrates that really well. Now, at least uh, one of us on the Yo-Tricks team, we learned using a completely different method. And so um, this one's a little bit more out of the box, but I think you'll see how this works. Um, instead of practicing your boings uh, straight out, what you do is you just pass it in front of and then behind the first finger on your opposite hand. And again, that just serves to illustrate that it is an up and down motion and there's a regularity to it. Um, but watch what happens as you practice this particular method. Um, eventually, you might see the yo-yo start to swing. And you can see the more it swings, the more it is like the regular boingy boing motion. And so it's a simpler method that you can try that will lead into uh, practicing the normal trick. Now one thing, if you are using a responsive yo-yo, this uh, particular method may end up snagging the string a little bit. It might bind when you don't want it to. So if you want to practice this method, it's a good idea to use an unresponsive yo-yo if that's happening to you. Um, now the other thing is you can kind of transition using this method into like a half boing practice. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, instead of going down in front on either side of your first finger, you could um, just do it on one side. So you go under and then do a boing. And then you can practice that on the other side too where you do a boing and then you just go down on one side. And again, these are just kind of steps along the way so that you can continue to practice until you get that perfect rhythm down and you start to really feel the trick. Now, when you're practicing this trick, like we already mentioned, it's going to take a little while, but there is going to be that moment 
where you really get it. And it's gonna feel different and you're gonna know that you got it. And so when that happens, make sure that you keep practicing uh, because you don't wanna lose it. But if you just keep at it and keep working at it, as you can see, it's a really fun trick and it's really satisfying to learn. So that is Boingy Boing.